here we present the surgical case of a left panhypocampal low-grade glioma that was done in two separate stages. The patient is a 51 years old male that presented with a seizure. He has a large mass involving the hippocampus all the way from the head of the hippocampus and uncus to the body and then the tail of the hippocampus. That's why we call it a panhypocampal glioma. You can see on a large inferior ventricular vein. And this is the fibrotracking that was done pre-op, showing the arcuate fascicle lateral, as well as the optic radiations above and lateral the tumor. And these are all the other fiber tracks and the relationship with the tumor mass. The surgical goal in general for low grade gliomas is to obtain a maximal resection while minimizing morbidity. Tumors like the one presented here cannot be completely removed in one single approach, requiring a two-stage operation. And the transient approach has many benefits, including a direct access to the lesion, while it might have an increased risk of vascular injury and vascular spasm. Here is the surgical positioning, and we had opened the sylvian fissure. We identified the upper surface of the uncus, the MCA branches have been dissected and are being protected. And we start by debulking the anterior aspect of the uncus. I find the amygdala deep in that area. And I know that just posterior to the amygdala, I'm going to find the temporal horn. That is the, is the ependyma, and we open that, and that's the head of the hippocampus where the tumor starts. I'm looking now medial to find the choroid plexus and the choroidal fissure. This has been done through an inferior insular sulcus approach but I now continue the bulking the uncus and uh, liberating this early temporal branch from the MCA. And now I proceed with the lateral disconnection of the hippocampus from the rhinal sulcus to the collateral sulcus. This is the anterior disconnection from the amygdala for which I'm using the ultrasonic aspirator. And now the basal disconnection from the third nerve and the PCA and SCA and brainstem located medially. That is the choroidal fissure that is being opened and we preserve the arachnoid that keeps intact the anterior choroidal artery and the uh, brainstem and the branches going to the brainstem. This is the choroidal fissure, the, uh, this is the inferior choroidal point, and that is the anterior choroidal artery going to the choroid plexus, entering the choroid plexus actually, and that is the posterior aspect of the uncus, the extraventricular portion that is facing the brainstem, we can see the, again, anterior choroidal artery, as well as the inferior ventricular vein that drains the temporal horn. This is the choroid plexus, and we can see the veins on the roof of the ventricle, the pendimal veins. And now I continue identifying the body of the hippocampus, and I can look all the way posterior and see all this enlarged hippocampus, and I can see the posterior aspect of it all the way to the atrium. I continue dissecting the hippocampus from the ventricle towards the choroid plexus and I mobilize this until I find the choroid plexus located medially and I remove this in a piecemeal fashion. This is the choroid plexus and some of the remaining tumor attached to it. And this choroid plexus forms my medial aspect of the resection. That is the atrium we're seeing back there and that is the tail of the hippocampus that I cannot reach through this approach. After the resection, with an intact cortex, the patient did very well after the operation. He had some transient naming difficulties, but we can see that the arcuate fasciculus is completely intact. The optic radiations are intact for the most part, although we are losing part of Meyer's loop, and that's why the patient presented a superior quadrantonopsia defect. At eight weeks post-op, the patient had this MRI that showed a resection of the anterior and middle portions of the tumor with some residual tumor at the tail of the hippocampus between the uh, quadrigeminal plate and the uh, temporal lobe. And this could not be reached through the transibian approach. It was very posterior and medial. And now we're going to propose an approach to this residual tumor via supracerebellar transtentorial approach.
The sitting position and the paramedian supracellular transdentural approach provide excellent exposure of the tinteral incisura and the posterior aspect of the medial temporal lobe. It's important to have a number of precautions to avoid venous embolism, air venous embolism during the sitting position, and this include elevation of the lower extremities, reduce the head elevation as much as possible, use a transesophageal echocardiogram, and the use of a central venous access to aspirated air in case of air embolism. Here is the uh, incision and the positioning. We put a stitch in the tentorium initially, and this is going to help us develop the supracerebellar route, but with the sitting position, the aid of gravity greatly facilitate access to the quadrigeminal system and from here to the ambient systems. We see the arachnoid, we are opening the system, we saw the fourth nerve, this is the superior cerebellar artery, and we can clearly see the tumor that is now being separated from the brainstem. I'm quadrating the tentorium, and I'm going to cut the tentorium in a transverse fashion from lateral to medial, just enough to provide supratentorial access so I can see the portion of the tumor that is above the tentorium. And with this cut, I can communicate the supra and the infratentorial aspect of the tumor. We can see that large vessel, that's the posterior cerebral artery, before its bifurcation in calcarine and paradoxical arteries. And I continue working on dissecting the tumor from all the surrounding neurovascular structures. Then I debulk the tumor, and I continue dissecting it from all the periphery branches from the quadrigeminal plate and the brainstem. There is an arachnoid and PL plane that separates tumor from brainstem although there, are significant, there is significant adherence between the tumor and the microvasculature which made, which made this uh, resection a bit more tedious. But with careful technique, we achieved successful resection of this tumor. Now we are separated from the basal vein of Rosenthal, now from a, a PCA branch, that is the calcarine artery, as it bifurcates from the uh, P3 uh, trunk. That's again a close view of the basal vein. And we see the bifurcation right there of the posterior cerebral artery. And now this is the portion of the tumor that is going to connect with the atrium and with the previous resection cavity. And this part was the bolt carefully because it was uh, closely related with a PCA branch. As you can see it right there, so we carefully dissected off the tumor from this uh, calcarine artery. You can see the mass effect of the tumor on the brainstem. And we are being careful to preserve all the small branches from this uh, uh, PCA branch. We are just moving the last pieces of the tumor. And finally, we access the cavity of the atrium that had been opened before from the transibian route. And this joins or two corridors, the anterior and posterior corridors, into the hippocampal region, duroplasty, cranioplasty. And this is the post-operative MRI, a coronal flare sequence showing no abnormal flare signal that would suggest a residual tumor. We will match this with a T2 also, because there is some flow artifact in the resection cavity. So you can clearly see in this resection cavity, it's all fluid ar flow artifact with no obvious residual tumor. And then a sagittal view showing the pan hypocampal tumor resection. In conclusion, we achieve a complete tumor resection with minimal morbidity. Adjuvant radiotherapy is an option, but it was selected not to do it at this stage. And the patient returned to work eight weeks after the second operation and remained intact with the exception of superior quadrantinopia defect. Thank you.